every day I pray for world peace. I you married? For, you married? Yeah, I'm married. Okay, you pray for your family? You, you pray for world peace. Yeah. Now, you're going to rightly divide the truth, which is the Bible. Bring it out. Right? There ain't going to be no world peace. <laughs> God is destroying this place. Now we finna divide the word of truth. So whenever you pray, to give you more understanding on how you pray, how do you pray? Uh, first I go through a scripture. Uh -huh. and then after I read, get understanding something, then I go through my prayer, go through my repentance. Uh, what is repentance? Asking, asking you, God for forgiveness for your sins, bro. Okay, now to ask God for forgiveness, but do you continue to do the same thing over and over? That's what repentance is for, because it's you have to do that. But not okay, perfect. I'm gonna show you something. Yeah. So now, so go ahead. So when you pray, you you go through the scriptures. You go through your you pray. You re, you go through your repentance. Then what else you do? What you do? As far as when I'm praying, yeah. Um, I really pray for myself, my family. Every day I pray for world peace. And you married? For, you married? Yeah. I'm married. Okay. You pray for your family. You pay for and you pray for world peace. World, yeah. Now. Now I'm gonna show you some things. We're gonna rightly divide the truth, which is the Bible. Bring it out, right? Matthew 24. Let's get that on the fact that it ain't gonna be no world peace. <laughs> God is destroying this place. Why are we praying for world peace? Because that's what's going on in the churches. Now, of course, you didn't know, but our job is to rightly divide the word of truth so that you know how to change this thing to go further to get closer to the Most High, which is what you're trying to do. All right? You get it? Read that. Matthew chapter 10, verse 34. Think not that I have come to send peace on earth. Christ did not come to send peace here. So we praying for peace and Christ said, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not giving no peace. But we praying for that. No. Read. I came not to send peace, but a sword. But a sword. What's a sword to do? That's war. Christ came to send war, put differences between people. That's what's going on. That's why now you where, give me the bar that says nations shall be against nation. Give me that. Matthew chapter 24, verse 4. Uh -huh. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Don't let anybody lie to you. Remember, we study so that this can't happen. You can't deceive me. That's why we're supposed to study. Watch this. Watch what it's talking about when it says, don't let nobody deceive you. Read on. Verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. That's where we get these images right here from. But that's where you get these false pastors from, too. Bro. Because they come saying, the Lord said, the Lord said, and he said, no, no, what, they, what in the world they teaching our people? Right. Nothing. Right. Because they pray for world peace. But let's see, as we read on, don't let anybody deceive you, right? Keep that in mind. Read. For many shall come in my name, saying, uh -huh. I am Christ, read. and shall deceive many. They're going to deceive many. Read. And he shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. But you're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. But we're going to pray for peace. Christ said, no, there is going to be wars and rumors of wars. Ain't no world peace. If it's world peace, we on top. When world peace happened, me and you rule the earth, bruh. <laughs> That's when world peace gonna happen. Right now, we on the bottom. So Christ says there is going to be wars and rumors of wars. Read on. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things 
must come to pass. So these things must happen. Must happen. So what, instead of praying for world peace, no, no, we should be praying that while all this turmoil is going on, how will people wake up in it? We must wake up in it and understand that there ain't going to be no peace until we come back. So as Israelites, we come back and do what God says in the midst of all of this jacked up stuff. You see what I'm saying? So now you know not to pray for peace. Now watch this. Read on, read on. I'm going to go to Matthew 6 where Christ actually prayed. Read. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So when these wars happen, the end is not yet. Read on. For a nation shall rise against nation, uh -huh. and kingdom against, against kingdom. Read on. And there, sh and there shall be famine. So there's going to be famine. There's going to be lack of food. Ain't that what's happening right now? Ain't the food off the shelf? Christ said it's going to happen. Read. And pestilence. Pestilence. Now we got COVID-19. And now we got all kinds of variants that ain't. Now we got monkey pox. <laughs> but we're going to pray for world peace. No, sir. No, sir. Read on. And earthquakes. And earthquakes. Now, you now ain't it been like 20 earthquakes this month? Just in Columbia. How's it been, how's been shaking like a mug up there, bro? Read. <laughs> in diverse places. In diverse places. Read on. All these are the beginning of sorrow. This is the beginning. Is that the end of that verse? Yes, sir. So all these are the beginning of sorrow. That's the beginning of the end. So the world is ending, and our people are praying for the world not to end by saying world peace. Now, has any race or any nation ever went to the top without destroying the one under them? No. no. So can all, so when we get on top, what do you think will happen to the rest of the nation? Get out. So now let's get Matthew 6 and uh, let's read the prayer. You got it? Yes, yeah, read. Matthew chapter 6 verse 9. Let's see what Christ said. After this manner, therefore pray ye. After this manner, pray ye. He's giving us an example on how to pray. Watch this, read. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Uh -huh. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. God's will is going to be done. Where? In earth, uh -huh. as it is in heaven. In earth, as it is in heaven. We don't understand what we're saying when we pray that. What you're saying is, because does, does another race of people rule in heaven? <laughs> no, God rules in heaven. Yes, so whenever we, whenever God has written down, look, this is all going to happen. So my people be put back on the top of the earth. So we pray for everything that God says, your will shall be done. It's God's will that this earth be destroyed and that we rule. That new Jerusalem that we are waiting on. But the only way we get in is to do what the Bible says. You know Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And, lead us and, and look, that's something we can't do as a people. We can't forgive each other. We can't forgive each other. That's why you got black on black crime. That's why you got you leading all the gun violence. We can't forgive each other. That's why you, everybody, look, it's crazy. You'll be at odds with somebody and then pat, pat, pat. In our neighborhood, though. But the white man can kill us and we'll pick up a sign and say, I'm a man. Out. We have no forgiveness of each other. We won't do it to save our own lives. Read. And lead us not into temptation, uh -huh. but deliver us from evil. Now we're asking to be delivered from evil. The evil that we're asking to be delivered from is the evil of this world. What this image pushes is the same democracy that we live in. Yeah. This all came with democracy. <laughs> These false images, false freedom, because we're not free. There is no such thing as freedom of a religion if you don't do Christianity or Islam. Right, yeah. Or if you don't do Egyptology, something else. Because when we walk around and say we're the Jews, no, no, it's hate speech. Right, yeah. Who did I hate by just telling you that I'm the real Jew? I just chose to love me and find out who in the world I am. But it's deemed as hate speech when we say we're the real Jews. But we didn't hurt nobody when we said that. That's all we said. No, 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 no. There's hate speech. You're anti-Semitic. We Semitic. So what are you talking about? How are we against ourselves? Read on. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And that's who God is. He's the power and glory forever. Amen. And that's what we want, the kingdom. So now, I'm going to help you out. So now you know not to pray for world peace. You pray that you are able to wake our people up in this time period. All right, give me 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. 
So we're gonna go through a few laws so that way you can start to fix some of these things that you don't you've never heard before. So that way when you go and teach your family, you know exactly what to teach them. Alright? Great. First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse three. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So the head of out of us is Christ, right? And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. So the order is God, Christ, man, woman, children. That's the godly order. No one can break that. You, look, the society has made it to where the woman is over the man now. Or they're now they, they pitching that feminism or equal to. But that ain't what God said. That's of the world. That's this dude down here. That's what he's pushing because as long as they suppress us, the Bible is not going to come to fruition. But when we wake up, we make the angels move. Because we are the sons of God. When we do what God say, stuff got to happen now. Right. You don't think, look, this ain't the only place we teach. We teach this all over the world right now. Read on. Every man praying or prophesying. Now we're praying and prophesying. You're in the midst of hearing the Bible, am I right? It's prophesying. We're all in the midst of prophesying right now. And you pray all the time, like you said. Read. Having his head covered, dishonor his head. If you're praying or in the midst of prophesying with your head covered, you dishonor Christ. So what should you do with your hat? This my hat? Your hat. My hat? Yeah. Take off my hat. Yes. So when you pray and you got a hat on and anything on your head, you're disrespecting oh, God absolutely. straight up. Straight up. Right. Or okay. even while you're listening to the Bible. We're in the midst of prophesying right now. Yeah. So what should you do with your hat? That's why you notice don't none of us have a hat on our head. I like baseball hats. Yeah. Shoot. <laughs> But I don't wear them when I'm reading or teaching the Bible or praying. Gotcha. So what are you doing with your head on your head now? What should you do now just to show a side of, and it's a small thing, but believe it or not, most a lot of our people will buck up against this commandment. Watch this, read it again. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesying with her head uncovered, dishonoreth so the woman is supposed to cover her head when she pray or listen to the Bible. The man is supposed to uncover his head when he prays or listens to the Bible. So what should you do with your head now as we are reading the Bible and teaching you different things now? Just so as you go throughout your everyday walk that you will know what to do. You're listening to the Bible, the prophecies. Prophesying right now, you're in the midst of it. So what should happen to your head, Zach? Yes, sir. So for future reference, when I pray. Why you can't do it right now? For, so for All future, praises. So for, so for future reference, when, yes, I, sir. when I pray. You should take your hat off your head. Off. Don't we walk into a dirty courtroom and we'll take our hat off for the white man. Yeah, but we won't take our hat off for God. <laughs> yes, sir. So now we're going to get some more. Because I know he went over the Sabbath day with you earlier, right? Right? Did he go over that you're supposed to gather with people? Because I know you said you don't go to church. Did he go over that with you? He went over gathering. All right, so then you know you're supposed to gather on today. Then. Is that right? All right, so if you don't gather on today, what is that being said at that point? They said I'm going against the Sabbath. All right, and yeah. if you're going against the Sabbath, what else are you going against them? Oh. Exactly. Yeah. At that point, you're denouncing your heritage. When you say, I don't want to keep, I ain't going to the Sabbath, you denounce it. And I'm going to show you. Give me uh, Exodus. All right, read that. Exodus chapter 31, verse 16. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. So as we're supposed to keep this throughout our generations as a perpetual covenant, right. meaning it never stops. And throughout your generations, you got children. I got children. All our kids are supposed to know about God's Sabbath day. Yeah. All of them are supposed to be keeping it. Watch this, read on. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. It's a sign between God's people and God forever. Right. So whenever we say we don't want to keep the Sabbath day, what we're saying is, Lord, I do not want to be your child. Right. Imagine your son or daughter walking up to you saying, Pops, I don't want you to be my father. We'll snap. We'll go off. I've been paying all these bills, feeding you, putting clothes on your back, and you're going to tell me you don't want me? To be your father, I tell you what, get the heck out. 
think that what God did with us is why we in slavery, bro. Right. Bring <laughs> Bring that's up. why we right here now, because that's exactly what you just said. Exactly. That's exactly what God did. He did this right here because we chose not to honor him as our father. We chose to go against his rules. So now we have to be retaught those things so that we can keep it now. So these things happen because we chose to go against God the same way you said exactly. I'm putting them out. That's why we ain't in Jerusalem and ruling the world now. Now go to Deuteronomy 30 verse 1. <laughs> let's see, let's see what God said now. Since since now we're learning, let's see what we gotta do. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 1. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 1. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee. The blessing and the curse. Because at one point in time, we was on top of the world with King David and King Solomon. The blessing. Now it says, when these things come up on you, the blessing and the curse, now we live in the curse. Read it. Which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations. That's what we're doing right now, Zach. We are calling all these things to mind now in front of all the nations. Right on the corner, right in their face. And we trying to raise our people up right in their face. Regardless of what happens, we understand we are in danger right now. But we come out here for you. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.